All right, so here's a quick overview on what's new in version 0 0.3. So the, the big new things are filtering, um, the core playback of Corpora, and real-time analysis. So that's the sort of, there's been a lot of other changes, but that's a, the big three that are uh, new in this uh, version 0 0.3. So let me just show you how those work. So the first new thing is filtering. So in Corpus Match, you have these uh, new filter messages. And what this lets you do, it lets you, um, in the last update, there was this stuff on scaling, so you can make the uh, different descriptor spaces overlap. What this lets you do is to take whatever is in your corpus and limit it down to a certain thing. So I'll just kind of show you how this works. So first I'll just load the, the China corpus that we've been using for a bunch of these and just play back. Okay, so that's the sounds that are the nearest match for this, this chunk of the demo file. And this is all the sounds that are in here. But um, let's say I wanted to limit that. I could go through and, and actually like prune out the files in the corpus itself, like remove samples that aren't, you know, that I don't want for this specific thing. But that gets a little tedious and it's kind of hard to do that um, on en masse. So you've got all these messages here. So at the bottom here, it tells you what the messages you can query by and what operators you can apply. But basically I can filter it to only the quietest samples. So I apply this and you can see that's shrunk down now, so. Now, because this is much less samples, you can see it's primarily finding that one. And I've, I've turned round robin off here for a reason, but it's really limited the space. So since this is only quiet sounds now of the, the whole available corpus, um, the matching that it's finding, it's just finding one single one of them. And it's probably the loudest one of that. So this works really well, the filtering, if you use it with a setup. So let me load a setup and enable it. So now I'll do that again. You can see it's doing that. So the ones that are matched are still quiet, but when you apply a filter, it trims off everything that doesn't satisfy that filter, and then it takes that and rescales it to the new space. So even though this is all the quiet sounds, um, it's rescaled it so the absolute quietest sound is the minimum and the absolute uh, less quiet one is the maximum and all the other descriptors, but it restretches things out of that reduced space. So here's if I take just the quietest sounds but match across it. And it's still the, the, the China corpus, but I get this like just the sort of soft muted sounds. Now let's say I want to do only the brightest sound. So only the ones where the centroid is above 90. And I get these sort of blah, blah, the ones where the symbol really opens up. Um, and now you might be thinking like, all right, how do I get these numbers? So one you can sort of guesstimate at that, like, oh, well, you know, I know sort of roughly DB is, but there's this new message here, info. So when I press info, you can see here um, a bunch of information about this corpus. So this is new as well. So you can see the title, a description, and then you see some um, information about the descriptors themselves. So like the durations, the centroid, um, the brightness, and well, sorry, the centroid is the brightness, the flatness, the pitch, pitch confidence, etc. So this tells you the, um, the median or the min, mean, max, of the duration and such. And using that, you can use that to pick the numbers you want. So this is just using the brightest sounds. Now, what if I want the ones where the time centroid is short? So time centroid is where you have the full duration. Time centroid is the point at which um, half the energy is before and half the energy is after. So for percussive sounds, the time centroid tends to be quite short because it's um, most of the energy is in the attack. So time centered is a really good way of determining how long a sound sounds um, that's independent of duration. So the duration of a file might be three seconds, but the time centroid might be, in this case, I'm looking for the ones where the time centroid is shorter than 70 milliseconds. So that gives me this. So the sounds themselves might actually be longer, like with a tail, but the what's picked is there. And then finally I have another one here where duration, so only du um, files where the duration of the file is over two and a half seconds. And then I can reset the filtering, go back to normal. And all of this works across all the different time scales, the predicted stuff with or without the setup matching. So the filtering is something you can apply. Um, for now, you can only, it's, it's not destructive, but you can only apply one filter. So I apply this filter. And if I apply this filter now, it's a completely new filter. I may in the future work out something where you can apply multiple filters, but um, the syntax starts getting a little, a little fuzzy. But for now, you apply a filter, you do the thing and you carry on, or if you want to reset it.
the next new big thing is the playback. So when I first started making SP tools, one thing I didn't want to do was make a sampler just because that's like a whole full featured thing, a lot of different features and stuff. It gets really deep and really complex. So I made just a handful of like abstractions to let you do just simple corpus playback or some simple uh, loudness and spectral compensation, but they were a little bit hacky and you had to use one, but if you wanted to do a different kind of compensation, you had to use another. Um, it, it wasn't very easy going. So I stripped all that back and I thought, okay, what would the core sampler that I would want to be able to play back sounds with be? And I built that. So now there's SP Corpus Player. So this replaces Corpus Simple Player, Corpus Melband Player, and Corpus Loudness Player. So all of those are removed now and there's just SP Corpus Player. So by default, um, it works just as before. So you can play stuff. And this works exactly the same as SP uh, Corpus Simple Player would have before. Now, some of the new big things here is that it's its own sampler, meaning, well, not it's its own sampler, but now it uses a bunch of the features that you might see in Ableton's sampler or in the native sensory percussion sampler um, in that you have control over speed, start, length, attack, hold, and the curves for them. Meaning that, so I'll just put this play here. So by default, it's playing the whole of each of the match samples. So that's cool and all, um, but you know, maybe you want to mess around with that. Maybe you want to modulate the start or modulate the, the length of it and all these kind of things. So I can, for example, you can see that's just playing that short portion of it, but it's kind of cutting off the audio as you can hear. So what I can do here is put the hold back and this basically puts a fade out at the end of it. So maybe I want to cut a little bit of that start off and put a little bit of a, a fade in to kind of soften it. Um, you can also affect the speed. So it's still, it's still finding the nearest match based on the pitch and the, the centroid and everything as it would be. This speed um, parameter here is being applied after the fact. So it'll find the nearest match. So it's not like it's finding the nearest match of this transpose speed, um, but it'll find the nearest match and then you can play with the speed, which is kind of nice if you want to mess around. So as I put it like half speed here, I'll put the length kind of short, put a bit of a, a kind of a decay here and then apply a curve. Um, so I'll apply a kind of this type of curve. The, the graphic doesn't represent it, but like these numbers match what you might see in other programs. So it's doing a, a fade in from very early and it's doing a very kind of steep curve and it's playing half speed. So that's the sampler stuff and all of these um, you can modulate, you can use the descriptors to control them, you can do whatever you want with them. And all of these messages go directly to Corpus Player and is applied per sample. So if you're tweaking the knob, um, it doesn't take a, it doesn't uh, affect the settings of the one that's already playing. It'll only affect the settings for the subsequent ones. So you can freely like just put this on Centroid or Loudness or whatever, or just use an LFO and whatnot. So this is completely new. So all of this is the, the core stuff. Beyond that, um, Corpus Player also now handles stereo samples, meaning um, before when you analyze the Corpus, um, if your files are stereo, it only analyzes the one channel. And when you play back files, it only play back the one channel. Now, when you create a Corpus, you should redo all of your corpora um, because of the new analysis. Um, if your file is stereo, it sums it to mono and analyzes. But then when it plays it back, it still plays it back in stereo. So I've made a new corpus. So there's a Seat Lombard uh, plum butter. So I, I sampled my plum butter and I made a corpus of it using stereo um, samples. So to kind of demonstrate this. So I'll load a setup and I'll just play a bit of this and you can hear the sort of stereo funny business. So you can hear that the samples are stereo. Um, obviously, the audio going in is mono, so it's it's still um, matching the nearest based on the summed version, but then it'll play back the original file as it was. To do stereo analysis and stereo distance matching, it gets a lot more complicated, and not all sounds are stereo going in, et cetera, et cetera. 
Um, and beyond this, like you can do all the normal stuff. You can change the, um, the matching, you can filter it, you can do whatever you want. But all that's to say that when the file is stereo, it'll play back stereo. Um, the other thing that's new with the sampler here is before um, you had like Corpus Simpler Player, uh, Simple Player, the Loudness Player, Melt. there were different players, whether you wanted to do basic playback, um, spectral compensation, loudness compensation. Now it's just the one object. So by default, if you just send it corp the output of Corpus Match, it'll play the normal thing. If you send it a list that has the output of Corpus Match and um, the loudness buffer, it'll now do the loudness compensation as it would before. So this is doing loudness compensation. Um, and similarly, if you send it the output of um, the Melband analysis and the descriptor stuff, and you send it a list that's made up of the output of Corpus Match, then the second thing is the loudness, and then the third thing is the Melband, it will now give you the loudness and the spectral compensation. Okay, and all of that's in the one single object. So rather than have to have different ones, depending on the kind of thing you wanna do, there's a one-stop shop for the sampler, it has all these new things that it does. Um, and on top of that, you can also use it as just a vanilla sampler. So I'm just gonna load, um, and I've just, I've got a random folder of samples here. Um, if you just load whatever you want into a poly buffer, so here I put whatever name you want, literally just load it into a poly buffer and then make a message that sends an index and the name of your buffer. You can just use it as a vanilla sampler and you can use all of these sampler features as you would. Um, and if you want as well, if you do a third number, which is the loudness. So you can use this as like a kind of vanilla sampler for some of your playback usage if you want to have access to these things. So that's the second big thing, the corpus player. So the third new big thing is real-time descriptor analysis. So this is something that um, I didn't put in at the beginning because there's already objects for this. It's it's you know it, it's nothing new. What 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 SP tools brought to the table that was really nice is that all of this corresponded with a very tight onset. So this specific attack has these just descriptors. Um, but I wanted to include something now that has real-time analysis, but for um, all of the descriptors in the flavor that they're implemented in in SP tools. So the descriptors, the melbands, and the MFCCs, how they're um, presently implemented in SP tool. So now there is this real-time frame thing, which is similar to onset frame. I'm using like one of the, the stock Mac samples because this works better with sustained sounds as opposed to the very short attacks that you get with uh, like the demo sounds that I normally use. So that's fine and all. And then there's corresponding um, RT versions of each of the descriptors objects. So there's SP descriptors and now there's SP descriptors RT. So you get like just the real time thing out of that. And there's a couple musical examples in here. Um, so this one's taking the loudness and the centroid and um, massaging a filter. So it, it basically matches the jongly. So we can do things like that. Though This is all building towards something that will be in, in a future update. Um, but for now, um, you can do that as well. And there's, as before, um, well, not as before, but there's RT versions of S, um, the Mel Band and also the MFCC. So that's the other new stuff. And as I said before, the you should redo your corpus analysis because now it saves metadata with it as well for that info window and it, it does a stereo analysis. So it does some, some things a little bit better. Um, if you do have your existing corpus analysis files, they'll still work. Um, so nothing like that broke, but this just adds extra stuff on top of that. So yeah, that's what's new in version 0.3. Enjoy.